Hello. Today in this lesson, let us discuss about governors. The objectives of this today's lesson, on completion of this period of the lesson, you would be able to. What is meant by a governor? The difference between governor and flywheel. Classification of governors. Height of a governor. Equilibrium speed. Sensitiveness. Stability. Isochronism. Hunting. Efforts and power. Now, all these we are going to see in this lesson today's lesson. So, let us see one by one. First of all, we are having something known to unknown. If the load on a engine increases, if the load on a engine increases what will be the effects on speed of the engine if the load increases what is going to have happen so due to increase in the load naturally the speed will be reducing that means the effect on speed Of the engine is decreasing the speed right so speed of the engine decreases number two if the load on the engine decreases if the load on the increase engine decreases what will be effect on the engine so generally if the load decreases automatically the speed will be increasing right so the speed of the engine increases okay that means the load increases speed decreases if the load decreases speed increases that is the common commonly happening by the engine right so how can we keep if it is happening like this as the load is increasing speed is decreasing as the load is decreasing speed is increasing but it is somewhat difficult for us uh, for the engine that's why how can we keep the speed constant if even if the load varies if the, as we have seen load increases speed decreases and load decreases speed increases but we need a constant speed then what do i have to do and uh, how can we vary the load right so by varying the fuel supply that means if you control the input energy to the engine then automatically the speed of the engine remains constant that is the idea right so that means by varying the fuel supply next and how can we vary the fuel supply how to vary the fuel supply generally the fuel is supplied by using either the carburetors in case of uh, petrol engines or the fuel injectors fuel pump etc in case of diesel engines so but both in both the cases the common is the governor which can control the supply energy into the engine that means fuel supply into the engine so we can vary the fuel supply by means of governing only right so this is a common that means 
load increasing speed decreasing load decreasing speed increasing but we need a constant speed even though if the load is increasing or load is varying that can be achieved by controlling the supply of fuel into the engine that uh, controlling of fuel can be done by means of gower so that is the idea that's why let us discuss about the governors the governor what is mean by governor so the governor is a device the governor is a device which controls the supply of input energy that means fuel to the engine to keep the speed constant right as per the load variations right so irrespective of load variations once again what is meant by governor is it is a device which is used to keep the speed of the engine constant by controlling the supply of input energy even though the loads are varying so that is the governor so in this case as per the definition itself you can see irrespective of load variations it means say maintains constant speed number one the governor and increase the speed up to the rated speed when the load increases and decrease the speed up to the rated speed when load decreases that means the governor function is whenever the load is increasing the speed also to be increased to the rated value right and also if the speed decreases generally speed increases but it will limit the speed to the rated value only that means load decreases so that is the idea of governor that means simply we can define the governor as a device used to keep the engine speed constant by varying the input supply or fuel supply or by controlling the fuel supply according to the variation of the loads that is the governor here it is same happening so one is irrespective of load variations it maintains constant speed number one and if the increase the speed it increases the speed up to the rated value when load increases and it decreases the speed up to the rated value when load decreases that means because of load increasing generally load increase if it happen load increases the speed will be reduced but the governor is going to keep the speed at rated value similarly if the load decreases speed generally increases but it minimizes the or decreases the speed to the rated value only so that is the idea of governor right so here uh, as we are we have seen so many times generally the governor function and generally the flywheel function mostly sometimes confusing but the bung functions of both are different so that's why let us have a small comparison between the governor and the flywheel so as we have seen the governor and here is the flywheel maintain a constant speed of prime mover whereas the flywheel reduce the cyclic variation of the speed number one difference and the governor's function action is intermittent that means whenever the load changes then only its action will be taking place whereas the flywheel function is continuous there is a cyclic variation in the speed because of four strokes of the engine only in power stroke the speed will be very high and during the remaining strokes the speed will be minimum less when compared to the power stroke that's why there are some variations in the speed 
in order to reduce these cyclic variations the flywheels are used so this will happen continuously that means action of the flywheel is continuous whereas action of the governor is intermittent number 2 and the flywheel regulate the supply of energy only whereas the governor regulates input energy according to the load conditions that means the flywheel is receiving the energy during the power stroke and it will store and it will distribute during the remaining strokes so that's why the flywheel regulates the supply of energy whereas the governor regulates input energy according to the load conditions number 3 number 4 no control over the quality of working agent in case of flywheel the flywheel will not have any control over the quality of working agent whereas the governor changes the quality of the working agent it will change it will changes the quality of working agent right so this is the fourth difference right these are the some of the important number one is reduces the flywheel reduces the cyclic variations of the speed and the governor keeps the speed constant and whereas the flywheel action is continuous governor action is intermittent and the flywheel regulates the supply of energy uh, whereas the governor regulates the input energy itself according to the load variations whereas the flywheel does not have any control over the quality of working agent that means fuel whereas the governor has a control that means changes the quality of the working agent according to the needs right these are the four important difference between flywheel and governor okay right the classification of governors here you can see generally the governors are classified as centrifugal governors and inertia governors centrifugal governor broadly classified into simply centrifugal governor and inertia governor and the centrifugal governors once again divided into pendulum type and in case of pendulum type watt governor and in case of loaded type one is the pendulum type in case of pendulum type centrifugal governor the example is watt governor and loaded type centrifugal governors in case of loaded type centrifugal governors dead weight governor centrifugal governor and spring load controlled governor centrifugal governor right and in case of dead weight governors quarter governor royal governor and the in case of spring controlled governors hartnell governor hartung governor and wilson hartnell governor pickering governor so this is the broad classification mainly they are divided into number 1 centrifugal governor number 2 inertia governor in case of centrifugal governor it is divided into once again pendulum type of governor and spring con loaded type of governor in case of pendulum type of governor the example is what governor whereas loaded type of governor is or once again broadly classified into dead weight type governor and spring controlled governor in case of dead weight case one of the examples are quarter governor royal governor whereas 
in spring came spring controlled governors hartnell governor or tang governor wilson hartnell governor and pickering governor this is the classification board classification of governors right so let us see centrifugal governor see the figure once again here is the engine inlet pipe and this is the throttle valve and here is the bell crank lever this is the bell crank lever pivoted at this point and one end of pivoted uh, bell crank lever is connected to the uh, throttle valve and the another end is connected to the sleeve of the cover and here are the bevel gears which are connected to the engine and the sleeve can slide up and down between the s and s right so these are the fly balls these two are the links and this s1 is the stopper one and s also another s is the stopper and that means the sleeve can move up and down between s and s bottom s or an upper and s and these are the arms of the centrifugal governor right this is a simple construction so two arms two links two fly balls and a sleeve bell crank lever bevel gears and then throttle valve and inlet pipe so this is all about simple centrifugal governor so what will be the principle of centrifugal governors so based on the balancing of centrifugal force on the rotating balls by an equal and opposite radial force known as controlling force based on the balancing of centrifugal force on the rotating balls by an equal and opposite radial force known as controlling force it has two balls and equal mass and attached to the end of the arms as shown in figure this ball can be termed as fly balls governor balls or fly balls the spring gets the motion from the engine the spindle the spindle gets motion from the engine as the spindle rotates here you can see here is the spindle here is the spindle and this is going to get rotary motion from the engine itself through the bevel gears as the spindle rotates the balls revolves about the vertical axis of the spindle as the spindle rotates the balls revolves about the vertical axis of the spindle based on the speed of the engine balls the sleeves uh, position can raise or fall engine balls position can be raise or fall based on the speed as the speed vary the balls position vary based on centrifugal forces the sleeve position can also vary the sleeve and throttle valve is connected by bell crank lever due to this sleeve position throttle valve position can vary due to the sleeve position throttle valve position can vary amount of supply of working fluid will vary the engine speed vary if the load on the engine varies if the speed is more if the speed is more the throttle valve position comes to closer if the speed is less the throttle valve position opens more to increase the speed based on throttle valve position the supply of charge will 
vary. Based on charge supplied to the engine, the speed of the engine will vary. If the load is more, supply of charges should be more to gain the speed. If the load is more, the supply of charge should be is more to gain the speed. If the load is less, if the load is less, the supply of charge is less to decrease the speed. Thus, the governor speed will control. Irrespective of load variation, the engine will rotate at rated speed. So this is all about the working principle of centrifugal governor. Once again, let us see the working principle of centrifugal governor. Here you can see this shaft is connected to the engine. At the end of the shaft, bevel gears are connected. These bevel gears transmit the motion or to the, the motion to the spindle. So due to rotation of the engine spin shaft, the spindle also rotates about its vertical axis. As the spindle is rotating, which is pivoted at this point at the top, the fly bars along with the arms will also rotate. If the speed increases, if the speed increases, the fly walls also will be away from the, the spindle will rotate at a higher speed. If the load increases, the speed will be reduced thereby, engine speed will be reduced thereby that fly walls will reduce, thereby the sleeve can move either up and down, up and down thereby the operate the valves. If the valve is fully open, the energy will be, the fuel will be supplied more, thereby speed will be increased. There are in such cases. And similarly, in case of load decrease in conditions also, that uh, such a same procedure will be adopted. Right? So this is all about the working principle of, principle of centrifugal government. If the load is more, supply of charge is more to gain the speed. If the load is less, supply of charge is less to decrease the speed. Thus, the governor speed will control. In respect of load variation, the engine will rotate at rated speed. Right, that is the working principle of centrifugal governor. Let us see the inertia governor. In inertia governor, the governing mechanism is operated by inertia forces. Whereas in the previous case, that is operated by centrifugal force and a controlling force. <coughs> Whereas in this case, the governing mechanism is operated by inertia force caused by angular acceleration or retardation of the governor shaft. The amount of displacement of balls caused by inertia forces is controlled by springs. Complete balancing of the revolving parts of the governor is partially difficult in this inertia governor. So this simple discussion about inertia governor. And the different terms that are associated with this that are associated with these governors. As we have seen, the working of centrifugal, principle of centrifugal governor, and also small discussion about inertia governor also we completed. Now, the terminology used in governors, let us see the terms associated with the governors. Height of governor, height of the governor. It is the vertical distance from the center of the ball to a point where the axis of the arms, the vertical distance from the center of the ball 
to a point where the axis of the arms intersect on the spindle axis it is denoted by h right so if you see once again so so this will be the center of the ball and here are the two arms are intersecting with each other at this position and from here to the vertical distance from here is the height of the governor right so vertical distance from the center of the ball to a point where the axis of the arms intersect on the spindle axis it is denoted by h next equilibrium speed next uh, definition is first is height of the governor and next is equilibrium speed it is the speed at which the governor ball balls are in complete equilibrium it is the speed at which the governor balls are in complete equilibrium and the sleeve does not tends to move upward or downward that means the fly balls of the governor remains rotating but they will not move either upward or downward that will be the equilibrium speed this is speed at which the governor balls are in complete equilibrium and the end the sleeve does not move tends to move either upward or downward that is called equilibrium speed right mean equilibrium speed it is the speed at which the mean position of the balls or the sleeve it is the speed at which the mean position of the balls or the sleeve next maximum and minimum equilibrium speed the speeds of maximum and minimum radius of rotation of the balls without tending to move either way the speeds of maximum and minimum radius of the balls without tending to move either way that means either upward or downward so simply we can define the maximum speed as maximum equilibrium speed as it is the speed uh, maximum speed it is the speed at which the radius of rotation is maximum without tending to move downward or upward is the maximum equilibrium speed and the minimum equilibrium speed is it is the speed at which the radius of rotation is minimum the radius of rotation of the balls is minimum without tending to move either upward or downward is called minimum equilibrium speed once again let us see let us have the definitions for minimum and maximum and minimum equilibrium speeds maximum equilibrium speed is nothing but a speed it is a speed at which the radius of rotation of balls is maximum without tending to move either upward or downward and similarly minimum equilibrium speed is is the speed at which the radius of rotation of the balls is minimum without tending to move either of the way that means either upward or downward these are the mean equilibrium speed maximum equilibrium speed and minimum equilibrium speed right next is sleeve lift it is the vertical distance it is the vertical distance along the spin uh, spindle which the sleeve travels due to change in equilibrium speed it is the vertical distance which the sleeve travels due to change in equilibrium speed right so this is the sleeve lifts 
simply simply lift of the seal that means as we have seen in the previous uh, centrifugal governor figure top one s is there bottom one s is there the distance between the two s upper s and lower s is nothing but the lift of the sleeve or sleeve lift that is the vertical distance measured along the spindle axis <coughs> which the sleeve travels due to change in equilibrium speed that means from maximum speed to minimum speed or minimum speed to maximum speed maximum equilibrium speed right so that is the sleeve now sensitiveness it is the ratio of difference between it is the ratio of difference between maximum and minimum equilibrium speed to mean equilibrium speed it is the ratio of difference between maximum and minimum equilibrium speed to the mean equilibrium speed suppose if omega 1 is the maximum equilibrium speed of a governor And omega two minimum equilibrium speed of a governor, and omega is mean equilibrium speed of governor. That means mean equilibrium speed means average of maximum and minimum equilibrium speeds. That means omega one plus omega two by two. That is the mean equilibrium speed. That means. so the sensitiveness is sensitiveness of governor is omega 1 is the maximum equilibrium speed of the governor minus omega 2 will be the minimum equilibrium speed of the governor by omega which is nothing but the mean speed equilibrium speed of a governor that is the sensitiveness of governor once again it is the different it is the ratio between the difference between maximum and minimum equilibrium speeds to mean equilibrium speed is nothing but the sensitiveness right now the stability a governor is said to be stable a governor is said to be stable if there is only one radius of rotation of radius of rotation of governor balls for each speed within the working range of governor within the working range of governor once again a governor is said to be stable if the if the if there is only one radius of rotation of governor balls for each speed for each speed only one radius of rotation within the working range of governor that is the stability that means even though whatever the speed it is any speed the but radius of rotation is same then only the governor is said to be instable and for each speed within the working range only one radius of rotation radius of rotation for equilibrium right isochronism if it runs if it runs the governor runs at a particular speed of for a position of sleeve within the working range the governor is isochronous if the equilibrium speed is same for all radii of governor that means here simply whereas in the previous case we have defined one thing stability it is simply we can say opposite to the stability in case of stability the radius is only one the speeds may vary whereas in this isochronism the speed should be same but whereas different radius at different conditions so right so the governor is isochronous if the equilibrium speed is same for all radii of rotation so once again the governor is isochronous if the equilibrium speed is same for all radii of rotation so then it is called isochronous the governor is in isochronous that means the speed remains same but the radius will change whereas in the stability case 
radius of rotation is same but the speeds may vary the speeds may be different so that means simply we can say the isochronism and stability are opposite to each other so hunting next term is hunting the speed of the engine controlled by governor fluctuates continuously above and below the mean speed generally it will happen the speed of the engine controlled by governor fluctuates continuously above and below the mean speed next is that is called hunting the efforts the effort of governor is the force exerted at the sleeve it is the force exerted at the sleeve for a given fractional change of speed the force exerted or effort of the governor is the force exerted at the sleeve for a given fractional change of speed if there is any small change in the speed the force may vary whatever the amount of force is exerted due to this fractional change of speed that is called a force power so work done at the sleeve for a fractional change of speed work done at the sleeve for a fractional change of speed is nothing but the power if the it is nothing but the product of mean effort and sleeve movement the power is the mean effort product of effort mean effort and sleeve movement is the power these are the different terms that we are having in case of governors once again let us see all the terms one is the height of the governor it is the vertical distance from center of the balls to the intersecting point of the arms and the equilibrium speed the speed at which the governor balls are in equilibrium and uh, the sleeve does not move either upward or downward mean speed is it is the speed at mean position of the balls or the sleeve and maximum minimum speed the speed maximum speed equilibrium speed is nothing but the mag it is the speed at which the radius of rotation is maximum without tending to move up and down and minimum equilibrium speed is nothing but the speed at which the radius of rotation is minimum without tending to move either upward or down and the sleeve lift is the vertical distance from which the sleeve travels from lowest position to the highest position due to change in equilibrium speed sensitiveness it is the ratio between the difference of maximum and minimum equilibrium speed to the mean equilibrium speed stability is nothing but the for constant uh, if the governor is said to be unstable if the radius of rotation is same for different speeds isochronism isochronism if the the governor is said to be isochronous if the speed is same for different radius of rotation within the working range and hunting the speed of the engine controlled by governor fluctuates continuously above and below the mean speed that is called hunting in efforts the force sector exerted at the sleeve for a given fractional change of speed power is the product of simply the force and the sleeve movements or work done at the sleeve for a fractional change of speed so these are the different terms that we are having for governor in summary of this lesson in this lesson we have discussed the definition of the governor the governor is a device which is used to keep the engine speed constant by controlling the input energy according to the load variations the comparison between the flywheel and governor also we completed there are four differences are there and the classification of governors 
also we have completed in case of centrifugal governors and inertia governors centrifugal governors once again divided into pendulum type dead weight type and uh, loaded type sorry and in case of loaded type uh, pendulum type and spring control type mm, sorry dead weight type and spring control type in case of dead weight type water governor and coil governor have a spring control type uh, Pickering governor, Horton governor, etc. are there. So classification also we completed. Explanation of that means the principle of centrifugal governor also we completed, and inertia governor also we completed in this lesson. And also we completed some definitions. Our term definitions of governors: height of the governor completed, equivalent speed completed, sensitive. In case of equivalent speed, we completed mean equivalent speed. Maximum equivalent speed, minimum equivalent speed also we completed, and sensitiveness also we completed, stability also completed, isochronism completed, hunting completed, and then effort also we completed. And finally, the power we have completed so far in this lesson. Right? Now let us see some of the quiz questions in this lesson. The governor increases the speed at rated speed when the load on the engine. Governor increases the speed to rated speed when the load on the engine increased, decreased, constant, none of them. Which is the right answer? Generally, the speed is to be increased when the load increases because the speed will be reduced if the load increases that means as the reduced speed should be brought to the rated speed that's why the governor increases the speed to the rated speed when the load on the engine increased right let us see the answer so a increased that means the load is increased the governor speed also increases to the the governor increases the speed to the rated value right next when the load on the engine decreases the speed of the engine will when the load on the engine decreases the speed of the engine will generally decrease increase remain same None of them. Generally, what will happen? Load decreases, the speed will be increased. Right? Thereby, we have to decrease the speed to the rated value. So, the answer should be B. Right? So, when the load on the engine decreases, the speed of the engine will increase. Next, governor decreases the speed. Governor decreases the speed to rated speed when the load on the engine increased, decreased, constant, and none of the above, which is the right answer. Governor has to decrease the speed, increase the speed to the rated speed when the load on the engine, as we have seen. If the load on the engine decreased, the speed is going to increase. Thereby, we have to reduce the speed to the rated value, rated speed. So that's why B should be the right answer. Next question. The speed of the governor at mean position of the balls or the sleeve. The speed of the governor at the mean position of the balls or the sleeve is equilibrium speed, mean equilibrium speed, maximum equilibrium speed, none. So once again recall equilibrium speed, mean equilibrium speed, maximum equilibrium speed, minimum equilibrium speed, then the answer should be mean equilibrium speed. Right? So B should be the right answer. Next. The vertical distance of the sleeve travels due to change in equilibrium speed. 
sleeve lift height of the governor both of the above annam the vertical distance of the sleeve travels due to change in equilibrium speed is nothing but the as per the definition height is the center of the balls to the intersection of the arms so that's why height is not correct and both is not correct and none is not correct so a should be the a should be the right answer right the vertical distance from the center of ball to a point where the axis of the arms intersect on the spindle axis is not sleeve lift and not both of the above and none is also not correct and the height of the governor is right hands okay thank you thank you and patient for patient hearing